history, the legend. This is the famous My Father's Place, the rock and roll palace of the 70s and 80s. Imagine if these walls could talk, the tales they could tell. The rock and roll palace of which used to be was located at 19 Bryan Avenue, which is across town. That one closed in 1987, and this was a little years ago, so the walls probably didn't tell you much. Oh, yeah, but the same guy owns it, Michael Epi Epstein. So, to me, it's the same place where all those great artists once played. For example, did you know that Joe Willie played his piano here in the 70s when he was just starring out? Joe Willie played at Shea Stadium, not here. He was the quarterback for the New York Jets. You mean Billy Joel. <laughs> and the cops played here in 79, right when they had their first hit, Roseanne. I might be only 18, but I'm a classic rock expert. <laughs> right. And by the way, don't you mean it was the police who played Roxanne here in 79? Yeah, isn't that what I said? More or less. Boy, they just don't make music like that anymore. The heart, the soul, the passion. Yeah, that's rock and roll. We've been through this before, Jack. I just don't see it. This is the stuff my grandpa listens to. I'm sure it was fine back then. But what does it mean now? I can't really tell what they're singing about. Diane, sacrilege. You're talking about classics like Staircase to New Haven by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> tonight for a very special event, the return to the public eye of a classic rock superstar who hasn't been seen or heard from since 1984. Yeah, don't I know it. We drove three hours from Schenectady to see a flash in the pan who has been a record for the past 35 years. Instead of going to a Taylor Swift concert, which was only 10 minutes from home. Pop music is so shallow, Diane. I can't listen to it for five minutes without getting bored. But classic rock is timeless. For example, did you know that Pink Side of the Moon by Uncle Floyd was on the billboard for, for 917 weeks? It's Dark Side of the... Oh, forget it. Welcome to my father's place. How may I help you? doesn't mean I'm not a classic rock expert. And we're here for the return of a legend. Of course, my father's place is proud to be the first stop on Rick Dagger's Return to the Public Eye Tour. And I'm glad to see you came in costume. Yeah. Being that we're also celebrating our annual Halloween Spooktacular this evening. <laughs> She's Sonny Bono. <laughs> John Lennon. And I'm Yoko Ono. <laughs> Yoko who? Ono. Oh, yes. Boy, it must be awesome working here. You get to see all these classic rock superstars in concert, and you get paid to boot. It's okay, but I work a ton of hours, so I miss out on a lot. For example, my best friend has caught tickets to a great concert tonight, and all my friends are going, but I can't because I have to work. Aww. A concert? Who else is playing around here tonight? Taylor Swift. <laughs> She's playing in Schenectady, a three-hour drive, but well worth it. Uh, please feel free to take seats at that table. Excuse me? Am I safely inside? I guess so. I have to be very careful. If any of my fans see me in public, there could be a stampede. Your fans? Yes, it's one of the drawbacks of being the queen of classic rock. Okay. I assume you're here for the show. Yes. Have a yes. seat. Oh, thank you. I couldn't help but hear you say that you're the queen of classic rock. Now, don't let my looks fool you. Just because I'm only 18 doesn't mean I'm not a classic rock expert. But I always thought the queen of classic rock was Jonas Jolson, and she passed away years ago. No, I'm alive and kicking. I'm Gina Burner, as if you didn't know. Hmm, kind of brings a bell. What did she sing again? Well, my biggest claim to fame was doing backup vocals on Positively 4th Street. Matt Dillon! Jack! <laughs> But I made it all the way to
to the second to last cut before it was removed. Impressive. <laughs> and I was supposed to open for the monkeys in 67. But I got laryngitis at the last minute. And they went with Hendrix. And we all know how that turned out. <laughs> but my most recognizable role was as one of the girls in the ZZ Top Eliminator video. <laughs> I've seen those videos, but you don't look like any of those three girls. <laughs> That's because I was the fourth girl, and I stayed in the car. <laughs> Welcome to my father's place. How may I help you? Ah, oh, yeah, my father's place. I have found it. I'm here for the celebration. Indeed, I'm the guest of honor. Well, I know it's been 35 years, but I never expected Rick. Ah, yeah. I see the error you have made. No, I am not Rick Dagger. <laughs> but I am the one who is responsible for getting him returned to the public eye. You see, he is the first person who has successfully completed my soon-to-be-famous RRTP. RRTP? Ah, yeah. Recovering Recluse Treatment Protocol. And tonight, he'll provide proof to the world that my RRTP is revolutionary. Um, okay. Ah, yeah. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sigmund Frodo. Sigmund Freud? <laughs> ah, yeah. Common mistake. No, my name is Simon Freud. Simon Freud? Ah, yeah. I'm a practicing psychohypnotist. Psychohypnotist? Ah, yeah, a combination psychiatrist and hypnotist. Well, tonight, Rick Dagger's successful return to the normal life of a rock star will establish me as the father of reclusive psychology. Not to mention, set me up quite nicely for my retirement years. I see. And may I show you to a seat? Ah, yeah. But how many times do I tell you? Please, please the tickets when you buy them. Why, we could have gotten a five dollar rebate tonight if we had worn a costume. Oh, sugary. <laughs> sugary. I still don't know why we had to come all the way from San Francisco just to come to this place. <sighs> Honey, this is Rick Dagger. Why, he's a 70s icon who unfortunately fell upon hard times. Now, we're groupies from the 70s who are still going strong. I feel we owe it to him tonight to be here and show him our support. Well, what's the big deal anyway? I didn't like him then, and I don't like him now. Uh, and we all know why that is. Uh, uh, what's that supposed to mean? You never forgave him for what he did to you in 1979. Or, more precisely, what he didn't do to you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Look, it was 40 years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. And I'm sure you do too. <clears throat> and I still don't know what you're talking about, Sugar Ray. Sure you do. Not once. Not twice. But three times Rick turned down your advances after that show in Tupelo. Mm-hmm. Well, it was his loss, not mine. Well, that's not the way I remember it. Why, that was the year that you were in the running for the MVG Award. Mm -hmm. The only year, I might add. And when word spread about what happened between you and Rick, Right before the final vote, well, you lost out to Barbara the Butter Queen. Bye. Wait for it. One vote. It was a travesty, I tell you. She couldn't hold a candle to me in the promiscuity department. <laughs> but I didn't care about him then, and I don't care about him now. Well, maybe so. But just to be on the safe side, I removed a few items from your purse that I thought could be used as a weapon. Uh, your hairpins, 
your perfume, which I might add, could choke a horse, and your turbo magic wand. Oh, and how could my turbo magic wand be used as a weapon? Seriously? <laughs> that thing has more horsepower than a lorry. I'm sure you figure out. Excuse me, lady. But wait a minute. It's been 40 years, and I'm over it, sugary. I'm just over it. Would you leave me alone? Mm. Now what? <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cinnamon Frodo. <gasps> it's Sigmund Freud? <laughs> oh, God, common error. No, it's Simon Freud. Oh. Simon oh, Freud. No, oh, no, I could not help overhearing, and I think I can help you. You're a prime candidate for my SGTP. SGTP? Ah, yeah, my sperm groupie treatment protocol. <laughs> we'll have you over the rejection and back in business in no time. Oh, but is it covered by health insurance? <laughs> ah, yeah, it depends on your plan. <laughs> Call me on Monday and we discuss. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, what's a gal got to do to get a drink around here? <laughs> Why, if it isn't Gina Verna, I haven't seen you in decades. Fortunately. <laughs> Hi, Sugary. How are you? Oh, just fine. And you? Still a bridesmaid and never a bride. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Well, what I mean is you always seem to run into a string of bad luck right when you're on the verge of making it big. Did you ever wind up doing anything worthwhile with your life? I've done plenty. Well, that's not the way I remember it. And to be quite honest with you, I'm surprised to even see you here tonight. After what happened between you and Rick. What are you talking about? That duet the two of you were going to record, oh, that was going to be your big break. And you know, it would have been too if he didn't have his breakdown just 24 hours before the recording session. You know, I heard that they had to go with a different male singer. I think his name was um, Tom Petty, that's right. And you know, since your voice did not blend well with his, they went with a different singer. Stevie Nixon! Oh, oh yes, yo, yo. Oh, yo, yo, yo. And, and you were left high and dry, and pretty angry, as I recall. Death threats and all. Well, I guess I was a little upset at the time it happened, but it was no big deal. Oh, that's not the way I remember it. And then, to add insult to injury, Heard spread about Rick's breakdown. Why his record skyrocketed. Oh, Gina, a mere 24 hours, and you could have ridden his coattails to fame and fortune. You would have been set for life, but no dice. Wow, what a great crowd here tonight. Effie will be happy. 
Well, I won't be happy until this night is over. I just have this feeling that something foreboding is in the air. We have some shifty looking characters here tonight. And the shiftiest of them all, our guest of honor, isn't even here yet. Yeah, where is he? Wasn't he supposed to be here much earlier? Yeah, he was supposed to be here by 5.15. 5.15? Wait a minute. Let me guess, Jack. The what? Who? Oh, you got one right for a change. What? I figured as much. I don't know about you, Jack. I don't know. Third base! Yeah, if he makes it at all. This whole thing seems fishy to me. Return to the public eye tour. The guy was unstable 35 years ago when he dropped out of civilization. What are the chances he's stable now after having had no human interaction for 35 years? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I beg to differ. He has had human contact in 35 years. Contact with me during his training sessions. Once he has contact and got interacted with his wife. His wife? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Unknown to everyone, Rick met a door-to-door -door salesperson named Dolly who came to his house. And the rest is, as they say, is history. Dolly Dagger. Jimmy Heimlich's. Uh, yeah, and the rest is fate. It was the first time in 35 years he came down to answer his doorbell. Well, it was only after she was there ringing it for six hours. A very persistent salesperson. Ah, uh, yeah, and not long after that, Dolly contacted me. She is responsible for all this. How convenient. How did she know you? Ah, uh, yeah, I treated her previously. Dolly was a door-to-door -door salesperson and a recluse? That's impossible. Ah, yeah, it certainly is. I did not treat her with my RRTP. I treated her with my D, T, D, S, P, W, L, I, R. D, T, D, S, P, W, L, I, R? Ah, yeah, my door-to-door -door salesperson. Never mind. <laughs> Susan. Why don't you go tell Peppy that our guest of honor is late and see what he thinks we should do. Now, while you do that, I'll lead the audience in a sing-along to kill some time. I'm on it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to my father's place. Oh, yes. Isn't it great to be here? We have a really exciting evening planned, but I thought I'd begin the festivities with a song that is sure to get you into the spirit of the occasion. Please join me, if you will. The song is Monster Mash, and I believe the words are at your seats and at your tables. And I'd like to uh, have the Johnettes join me, if they will. Would you put your hands together for the Johnettes? These two ladies look absolutely wonderful. They are not in costume tonight. This is how they dress all the time. Son. 
the scene was rocking, all were digging the sounds. Igor on chains, backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive with their vocal group, the Rick Kipper Five. The monster bash. They did the monster bash. The monster bash. Oh yes, they caught on in a flash. They did the monster bash. Out from his coffin, Drax voiced in rape. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. He opened the lid, shook his fist, and said... It's now the monster bash. The monster bash. And it's a graveyard smash. The monster bash. It caught on in a flash. The monster bash. It's now the monster bash. Now everyone's happy. Drag's a part of the band. And my monster bash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them Johnny sent you. And you can monster bash. It's a graveyard smash. The monster mash. Oh, yes, it caught on in a flash. Monster mash. You can monster mash. Oh. Mash, good. Oh. Easy, Igor, you impetuous oh. young boy. Mash, good. Oh. oh, yes, the monster mash, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And you all sound absolutely marvelous. Susie, what did Effie say? He said not to worry. He has guest of honor, no show insurance. That will cover all ticket refunds in the event Rick fails to appear. Oh, no. <laughs> Things just went from bad to worse. <laughs> Do you know who that is? A samurai. The guy who dressed as a samurai? Yeah. That's Arnold S. Scheister, Rick's ex-manager. He had a lot to do with Rick's successful career, and even more to do with his demise. How so? He had, uh, Arnold and Rick had it out one night in a big way in Buffalo. And they had it out in the hotel lobby, and Arnold tried to kill Rick. Now, he never went to jail because of a technicality, while Rick dropped out of civilization, never to be heard from again until now. But how did he try to kill him? As well as being a manager, Arnold fancied himself a magician and expert dagger thrower. Now, fortunately, that night, he wasn't as good as he thought he was. He missed Rick by a quarter of an inch to the right. To this day, mentioned wide right in Buffalo, and I'm guaranteed you'll get a reaction. <laughs> now, Arnold said if he ever saw Rick again, he wouldn't be so careful. But it's been 35 years. Still, you better tell Epi and see what he thinks we should do. I'm honest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you once again to my father's place for the 2019 Halloween Spooktacular! <laughs> Our guest of honor is a 1970s rock and roll superstar who is returning to the stage and to the public eye for the first time in 35 years, after 35 years of not performing. He has a 42-stop nationwide tour plan, and my father's place has the distinction of being the very first stop on that tour. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, no doubt, uh, this will be a, a, an event that will be remembered and talked about for years to come. So, get comfortable and get ready to enjoy what is sure to be an eventful evening. Susie. What did Effie say? He said not to worry. He has guest of honor, Violet Dad. Never mind. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Look over there. Okay, this, this, this could be serious. This could be serious. Oh, boy. All right. Everybody. Hello, oh. darling. Oh. And welcome. Yes, you must be Dolly Dagger. Well, you're half right, darling. I am Dolly, and I'm married to Rick.
Dolly's Dagger. But I'm not Dolly Dagger. I chose to keep my maiden name Dolly Lewis. Let me guess. Dolly Lewis, let me guess. Your middle name must be This Is. Hello, Dolly. This is Lewis Dolly. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs>
with your return to the public eye. Ah! They're watching me! They're watching me! Rick, darling, it's just a banner. Simon tells Rick that nobody is watching him. Other than the 150 guests. 150 guests?
Yes, is, is there anyone else with a question for Rick? Is there red clothes or meat clothes? <clears throat> Excuse me? Is there red clothes or meat clothes? That's what I thought you said. I used to wonder about that too. And then one day it just came to me in a vision. It's recluse. <laughs> Except for if you're a recluse and then you return to worldly activity only to become a recluse again, in that case, you're a re-recluse, which can be shortened to recluse. <laughs> Particularly useful when tweeting. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Rick, for being a good sport and giving us such interesting insight into your uh, unusual lifestyle. Now, uh, before Rick performs, we'll give him a chance to have a bite to eat or a drink. Eat? Drink? <coughs> you have peanut butter and Spam. this tour. I'm going to make sure it's after this tour. Ah, uh, yeah. Come, Rick. Let's go backstage. We'll help you prepare. Ladies and gentlemen, as we await Rick's triumphant return to the stage, it is time to give out the prizes for the best costumes in the 2019 <laughs> Halloween Spooktacular. Susie, the envelope, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen. For third prize in our best costume contest, contest today, I am delighted to say that the winner, and she will be getting this beautiful Slayer Players t-shirt, just what she's always wanted. <laughs> is Maria Belport. <laughs> Maria, come on down here. And Maria has her, her Duck Dynasty costume on. Here she comes. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Here she comes. Let everyone see you there. Maria Belport. Maria, we just gave a prize to Maria. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the second prize for best costume at the 2019 Halloween Spooktacular. Thank you for the envelope. Uh oh. Thank you, Susie. Ladies and gentlemen, second prize. And the prize is a marvelous $100 gift coin to one of the finest restaurants that I know, The View Grill in Glen Cove, New York. And 
and it's going to Mrs. Goodyear, who is portraying Superman or Superwoman. We're not exactly sure how she's identifying tonight. Come on down here, you big winner. Are you identifying as a woman or as a man tonight? Are you Superman or are you Superwoman? She is Supermom, ladies and gentlemen. And you are going to the View Grill. And I do recommend that onion-crusted chicken. I think Janine is just marvelous with that. And now, whoa, big moment, ladies and gentlemen, big moment. The prize for the best costume at the 2019 Halloween Spooktacular. And it goes to Noreen Al Tamimi, who is the Princess of Dubai and of Arabia. She's the Princess of Araby. Congratulations, Noreen. And Noreen will have two complimentary tickets to the holiday show of the Slayer players at the View Grill. Yes, just what you've always wanted. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Congratulations. Let's put our hands together for our big winner. Yes, and the... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Princess of Arabia would like to come to the microphone. Should we let her do it? Why not? Put your hands together for her, please. Yes, Princess. I asked the Uber to bring me to my father's palace. Yeah. Happy tells me he's working on that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Princess of Arabia. Congratulations. Now, are we ready? We're ready. Look, yeah, Rick is ready to perform. Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, big moment. This is what you have all come to my father's place to see and hear. You've waited 35 years for this moment, and your wait is about to end. Our guest of honor was a 1970s rock and roll superstar, and he burst on the scene in 1969 uh, with his debut album. If you knew how they made the sausage, you'd be more apt to eat your greens. <laughs> but it was his next album, Lend Me Your Fears that really put him on the map. It was on the Billboard charts for eight months and had his greatest hit. If our pets could talk, would we still like them as much? <laughs> so let's get all of his fans to come to the front of the stage to show him our support. Really, right here at the front. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause for Rick Dagger!
Now I must continue to work until I'm so dearly departed. <laughs> you told us so, all right. You finally finished the job after all these years. You didn't miss this time. Are you crazy? Do you think if I was going to try to kill him again, I'd use a dagger? And in front of all these people? Oh, please. You're a master dagger thrower, and he has a dagger sticking out of his stomach. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure this one out. <laughs> I didn't throw the dagger. You didn't throw the dagger. He didn't throw the dagger. He, he didn't, didn't throw, throw the dagger? dagger. <laughs> no, this dagger wasn't thrown in. This dagger was thrust in from close range. So uh, I guess maybe Sherlock here never considered the possibility <laughs> that someone would try to frame the master dagger. I told you I didn't do it. Not necessarily. You still might have done it. You might have thrust the dagger in to make it appear that someone was trying to frame you for throwing the dagger in, knowing that we'd all figure out that the dagger wasn't really thrown in, which would exonerate you because no one would try to frame himself. That's, that's great detective work, Sherlock. And, and because I was standing all the way over there, I guess I'm Stretch Armstrong, too. <laughs> Maybe you should entertain the possibility that some of these uh, friends and supporters weren't so supportive after all. Funny. I know we talked about this, but I didn't think you'd go through with it. But Sugary, I didn't do it. Dagger to the gut is too good for the dirt bag. Now, uh, gouging his eyes out with the turbo magic wand. Oh, that would be really something. But you took everything out of my pocketbook. And then, did you really think there was a dagger in there that you might have missed? Good point. Uh -huh. Gina, you finally made good on those death threats. Why would I Whoa. stand here oh. when I was going to kill the jerk in the parking lot after the show with this? It's easier that way. It, it, seems, it seems to me like we're all missing the obvious here. Everyone knows. In a case like this, you start with the spouse. And when that spouse has already been a widow 12 times... That is ridiculous, darling. I never would have killed Rick before the tour was done. I may be a crazy one, but I am not stupid. So uh, I guess this means nobody stabbed him to death. Nobody stabbed him to death. Nobody, Nobody stabbed, stabbed him to, to death? death? No. Nope. The bleeding pattern shows a venous thrombotic subhematological post-humous coagulative scar. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. But I do know that in order for it to happen, he'd have to be dead before the dagger was thrust in. So maybe he died of natural causes. <laughs> Right. He just happened to die of natural causes, and someone nearby just happened to have a dagger that they thrust into his stomach to frame me for the crime. I couldn't see that happening. Obviously, one of you killed him some other way, and part of the scheme was to frame me for doing it. Oh, oh I thought it was her. Too complicated. We need a professional to figure this out. Is there a policeman in the house? You there, are you a policeman? I'm not a policeman. This is just a costume. I'm a lawyer. Hmm. Now let's see. The person dressed as a doctor was really a sanitation worker. And the person dressed as a sanitation worker was really a doctor. Now, if the person dressed as a police officer, is really a lawyer, then the person who is really a police officer must be dressed as a... You there, are you a policeman? Never mind that, there's been a crime committed, and we need help figuring out who did it and how. Well, you've come to the right place. No, you're the person who came here, so you're the one who came to the right place. This is the right place, then it's the wrong place. I'm looking for my father's place. Wait a minute. 
Uh, this is my father's place. Oh, then it looks like I'm the one who came to the right place after all. That's what I just said. Oh, well, if you're able to figure that out, maybe you're the one who should figure out who committed the crime. But I'm not the policeman, you are. Yeah, how do you know that? Never mind that. There's been a murder committed, and we need help figuring out who did it and how. Ah, well, you've come to the right place. Oh, goodness gracious. Inspector Bungler is my name, and apprehending murders is my game. So, uh, what happened here tonight? Yeah, let me handle this, Johnny. Our guest of honor, a 70s rock and roll superstar who has also been a recluse for the past 35 years, collapsed and died with a dagger lodged in his stomach when he took the stage to perform. Ah, oh, that's easy to figure out. Someone close to the stage threw the dagger into his stomach to kill him. Case closed. No. The doctor examined it and determined the dagger was thrown in, not thrust, uh, thrust in rather, not thrown in. Ooh, that's even easier to figure out. Someone close to the stage thrust the dagger into his stomach to kill him. Case closed again. Nope, because the doctor also determined that the dagger was thrust in after he had already died from something else. Uh, I should have known. I've solved hundreds of cases like this during my career. You have? Well, maybe not hundreds, but uh, a fair share. So who did it? It's always the reclusive rock star's butler. But there is no butler here. There's no butler here? Then uh, who lets all the people in? Well, nobody. They, they just kind of uh, come in on their own, like you did. Huh. Well, no wonder he's been murdered. What do you expect when you let strangers into your home on their own? This is not his home. It's my father's place. Well, then your father's the one who needs a butler. And if you were a good son... Uh, never mind. I try not to get involved in family matters. Um, I need to examine the body. Uh, where is it? It's right here. Uh, yeah. A dagger. Thrust in the stomach, not thrown in. Prior to death. I concur completely. Case closed. Uh, nope. Because we still haven't figured out who did it. And how? Ah, details, details. All right, I, I can say this. I don't know who did it, but I do know how. Now, you notice the bloating, okay? The discoloration around the lips, the swollen tongue, and of course, the post-mortem flatulence. <laughs> you know what that means? It means, uh, the one who smelted dealt it? No. <laughs> it means the one who denied it, supplied it. No, it means he was poisoned. Poisoned? poisoned? So what did he have to eat or drink just prior to coming on stage? Ach oh, ja, I can answer that. Nothing. I was with him the whole time. Ach du lieber. He was too busy throwing a temper tantrum was holding his breath to eat or drink anything. So, the last thing he had was that.
You were here because you had to be. And you would have wanted to end this thing as early as possible. What better way to end it early than to murder the guest of honor? That's anti disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> Besides, everybody knows you hate rock and roll because he was a 70s disco dork. Now you're grasping at straws. I am so confused. Forget about this nonsense. Is there anyone out there who has some idea about what really happened here tonight? I don't know what happened, but I know one thing. Nobody can be as cool as that, as that inspector. There's more to him than meets the eye. Hey, I resemble that remark. I'm every bit this clueless, and what you see is what you get. Wait a minute. We're no closer now than we were before. Look, somebody here schemed and committed a murder, and we're all in danger until we find out who that person is. Until he came to me after Rick's breakdown. 
Poor Blimey, it was the perfect plan. With your help, I could have taken his place and no one would have been the wiser. We could have made a fortune off his name and feasted on smoked salmon and caviar in a posh pad while he ate peanut butter and spam and seclusion. But you wouldn't go for it, would you, sunshine? I couldn't. You can't sing. Do me a favor. Haven't you ever heard of lip syncing? Vanilla fudge. It never would have worked. Besides, I had a reputation to maintain for you. It didn't matter. Case closed. Uh, nope. We still haven't figured out how Nick was able to poison Rick with a salad that has no traces of poison and that Dolly ate with no repercussions. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess the cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> he and I share a rare fatal food allergy, what's only found in identical twins. Just a few bites of Manchurian melon and you're gonna. Not said, yeah? I've never heard of Manchurian melon. It's a rare tropical fruit what served as a delicacy in the UK. I found a peel lying in the gutter one night and licked it for me supper. That's how I found out about it. I was lucky. Wasn't enough to kill me. But I had a reaction. So I looked in it and found out I was allergic. Which means he'd be, wouldn't he? But he wouldn't know it because it's not served here in the States. So, ha <laughs> ha! When I put it in his salad like rat poison, <laughs> the geezer gobbled it up like the rodent what he is. <laughs> or was. <laughs> mm. Case closed? Yes. Case closed. Let's go, Perp. We got a ten pound sweet for you in the Huskow.
detective. You solved that crime like Carmi and Gracie. Taking that video was a stroke of genius. Yeah, I didn't take any video. Then why'd you say you did? I wasn't even paying attention when he came out to perform. Diane, such a brave and noble gesture in the interest of justice being served. I don't really care about that. But at the rate we were going, somebody had to do something, or we would have been here all night. Now can we finally go? Well, you know what they say. Life goes on long after the thrill of living is gone. Walk on. So 
Sure. Thanks a lot, everybody.